In Super Mario Galaxy 2, the scariest characters in the game are the ones that Mario does not meet. While in the Shiverburn Galaxy, you can view a group of creepy characters staring down at you from a cliff, but only in first person mode. In Deep in the Game File, you can even find out these guys are called Hell Valley Sky Trees. But here's where things get creepy. In World 4-4 of Super Mario 3D Land, one of these creatures can actually be found at the end of a level, hiding behind a flagpole. Players have talked online about theories that these can actually be demons coming to get Mario. And because the later game has the demon a little bit closer, there might be some truth to it. And no one ever mentions their existence in the game either. So this might hold water. Demons exist? Five out of 10 creepy. The instruction manual for the Super Mario Brothers game for NES definitely says something weird. It says that the former inhabitants of the Mushroom Kingdom were turned into bricks. Yes, the very same bricks that Mario goes around smashing all throughout the game. So that begs the question, where do the coins come from? What if Mario was actually stealing the souls of the former Mushroom Kingdom public? And to add on to this theory, what happens when our friend Yoshi eats or kills an enemy? They turn into a coin. Each ding is Mario taking another soul from the world. This theory has proof in form of the instruction manual, and there is no arguing with that. Stealing souls? 8 out of 10 creepy. Why would someone never take off their mask? No, not Bane. In Super Mario Bros. 2, that's exactly what happens with Shy Guy. The character's so cute! If we didn't know what was going on underneath that mask. Because in the 2004 game Mario Power Tennis, Shy Guy, after winning the whole thing, falls down, tripping in front of Luigi. Pretty cute, right? Well, it's not cute when we see Luigi's reaction. Pure freaking horror. But don't totally worry, because in the game Luigi's Mansion, the mask can be removed, and what's left is... emptiness. And in this picture from Mario Power Tennis, it's confirmed. There's just nothing there. There's nothing creepier than the unknown, so 10 out of 10 creepy. Who would have thought that Mario, Link, and the world of Nintendo could be considered just as creepy as Slender Man? Despite being considered one of the most family-friendly video game companies in the world, Nintendo's been filled with some creepy elements through the years. Watch and see how murder, real-life prisoners, and the Illuminati have all intersected the world of Nintendo. Check out 10 Nintendo secrets that made kids' games creepy, but before you do that, click subscribe. You'll join our notification squad and be the first to know of new content. Mario and the Prisoners Remember the Game Boy that you loved to play as a child? It was likely made by prisoners. Nintendo has a long history of using prison labor to create some of the most beloved merchandise by children. Imagine owning a game or device that was actually built with the hands of a murderer. Their labor went beyond games. It also included toys, stuffed animals, board games, and a plethora of other Nintendo products. The prison program started in the 1980s, and Nintendo spent years trying to cover up this fact, but have admitted to the actions in recent years. One of the disturbing parts of the whole situation is that many of the workers are on the sexual offenders registry list. It's hard to picture someone that may have committed crimes against a child is now making them happy by building and packaging a variety of electronics and toys. Ugh, honestly, just saying that kind of makes me sick. Not only did prisoners get their hands on children's merchandise, but they actually got paid to complete the labor. And here you thought that the Koopa clan was the evilest part of Nintendo. Creepy Eyeballs Nintendo has a long history of showcasing a creepy world of eyeballs. There have been many cases where eyeballs have been used as an evil part of a Nintendo game. One of the scariest parts of Super Mario 64 featured a giant eyeball that rolled through a haunted house level. The intense music that accompanied the rolling eye only made things worse. Mario Party 8 had the disturbing Eye Brawl minigame that sent players into the deep woods to do battle with a collection of floating eyes. The ominous eyes lacked the same whimsical factor and fun that other minigames in the series featured. When a player lost in the level, they would be surrounded by a collection of miniature eyeballs that would circle and haunt characters. Rumors have persisted for years that the single eye symbolism featured in Nintendo games is directly associated with the Illuminati. Another example comes from the Nintendo 64 controller. 
The middle grip and analog stick is said to be designed off the Illuminati eyeball placed inside of a triangle. Either way, those games could give you nightmares. Pales in comparison to the horror stories of the Mario Party palm blisters, if you ask me, though. The All-Seeing Zatu the massive world of Pokemon is filled with all types of powers and abilities. There's strength, water abilities, and electrical powers, among others. One of the strangest abilities comes from a mystical Pokemon named Zatu. Zatu is an all-seeing Pokemon with a calm demeanor that stays completely silent no matter what is going on. He doesn't yell out, Pika Pika, or feature some type of cool mutating action. The bird-like creature has a depressed look on his face and spends his days just staring at the sun. You'd be lucky if you even saw Zatu blink. The reason for this, Zatu can see everything in the past and the future. Various Pokemon trainers have used Zatu to give messages in the past or to see grim views of the future. He uses his psychic abilities to do battle with other Pokemon, but when he's not battling, his visions cause a lot of disturbances. This includes all of the terrible tragedies in the world and even your own death. I've known that Pokemon was dark even way back when I got Pokemon Blue for the first time, but it just never ceases to amaze me. Well, Good luck playing with them, kiddos. Donkey Kong was beat up. Donkey Kong may be a lovable hero with his own franchise now, but it didn't start out that way. The barrel-tossing villain of the original Donkey Kong was not just an angry ape, he was an abused one. According to the game's official manual, Donkey Kong was Mario's mistreated pet. The mistreatment obviously went too far, and Donkey Kong sought revenge. Getting sick of the abuse, Donkey Kong escaped the clutches of Mario, kidnapped a woman, and tried to explain his injustice to the world. Unfortunately, his communication skills were a little subpar, and and Kong ended up just throwing a bunch of barrels instead. Oddly enough, anyone that played the original Donkey Kong was in control of the animal abuser himself, Mario. It's surprising that the game wasn't criticized by PETA back in the day. Apparently, the two have made amends, as Donkey Kong is now one of Nintendo's biggest heroes. He's teamed up with his former owner on numerous occasions, and the two can often be found racing against each other in the Mario Kart series. Mario has seemed to turn a corner from his animal abuse days, but it may be a good idea to send Yoshi a small warning about his owner's shocking past. Although, maybe Yoshi already knows, what with all the mid-air ditching. Mario cheated on Princess Peach. There's no greater video game love story than the long journey between Princess Peach and Super Mario. They have had countless adventures where Mario rescued Peach and the loving couple sailed off into the sunlight with nothing but their love for each other. Too bad Mario tainted the whole thing by cheating on Peach with Princess Daisy. In Super Mario Land, Mario diverts his attention from Princess Peach to help the kidnapped Princess Daisy. It's all good to save any princess you can, but Mario's motives were clearly a little shady. After Mario saves the kingdom and rescues Princess Daisy, the two fly off together in a private rocket ship. I know what you're thinking. They're going to meet up with Peach and tell their harrowing tale. Nope! As they fly together, Mario clearly joins the Mile High Club with Daisy as a heart appears. It may have been one of the biggest twists in Mario history. Not only did he cheat on Peach, but Daisy is the main love interest of Mario's brother Luigi. The whole affair has an episode of Mori written all over it. Maybe Bowser was the better option all along. Drowsy the Dream Eater Pokemon may spend a lot of time inside their Pokeballs, but they need to get loose to eat every now and then. While many Pokemon enjoy meats, vegetables, and other normal foods, Drowsy takes a page from Freddy Krueger. Drowsy is known as a hypnosis Pokemon, using psychic abilities to put his opponents to sleep. Drowsy must eat dreams to survive, but oddly, he can only eat the dreams of children. The way he does it is just pure frightening. A sleeping child will feel an itch on their nose, as the nose acts as a portal to their dreams. Who comes up with this stuff? Drowsy remembers every single dream he eats, making him even creepier for the massive invasion. As if eating dreams wasn't scary enough, Drowsy is incredibly scary to look at. He looks like a mutated tapir, complete with three clawed toe things in each hand. Drowsy has been featured in multiple Pokemon games, along with movies and animated specials. When there aren't enough dreams, Drowsy suffers through terrible nightmares. Maybe you should save Drowsy for daytime gaming only. Or... Maybe just don't use the creep at all. Mario kills mushroom people. 
In Mario's never-ending quest to save Princess Peach, he's also rescuing captured citizens of the Mushroom Kingdom. It's too bad that the heroic plumber doesn't realize how many mushroom people he's killing in the process. In the original Super Mario Bros, the manual states that the evil Koopa used black magic to turn the mushroom people into special stones and bricks. Yes, those are the same stones and bricks that Mario's been smashing for over 30 years. Not only does this include bricks that Mario smashes just for the heck of it, but it also includes the question mark bricks that Mario hits for gold coins and power-ups. Essentially, Mario's getting paid to kill off as many mushrooms as possible. It's like a mass killing when he gets his plumber's hands on a block that has multiple coins in it. The poor deaths of the mushroom people only got worse in later versions of the games. Mario gained the ability to freeze, whip, and torpedo through bricks as he made his way through levels. Yikes. Cubone's Skull Origins Cubone may be considered one of the cutest Pokemon for his small size and the way he wears a skull on his head for armor. The creepy part? The skull that Cubone wears is actually his own mother's. Cubone lives on, fighting the good fight for his mother that obviously had some sort of grim death. The skull not only honors his mother, but acts as a great piece of armor when the Pokemon is battling. It adds a lot of strength and defense when going up against other monsters. <laughs> Unless they're water types. As if that isn't creepy enough, when Cubone isn't battling, he's constantly crying, howling at the moon, and mourning the mysterious death of his mom. His mother's death has never been explained, but it's clear that Cubone either witnessed it or was traumatized in some way. In some sick twist, Cubone could have been the one who actually slayed his own mother. In another twist, Cubone carries around a sharp bone that he uses as a weapon. Hopefully the bone weapon isn't her femur. Mario Kart's Giant Rock Many levels in the Mario Kart series feature gorgeous scenery, including the often used Peach Beach. The Peach Beach level is a great scenic ride that features ocean waters, idealistic views, and a place that many people would like to vacation at. The sand-based course is available to race on in both Mario Kart Double Dash on the Nintendo GameCube and Mario Kart Wii. Each track is exactly the same, with updated graphics featured in the Wii version. The next time you take a ride through Peach Beach, take a closer look at some of the rock formations. One area in the level features features a very large, phallic-shaped rock. Not only is the inappropriate rock shape clearly visible, but players must drive under the center of it to get through the course. Two large stones sit at the back of the rock and dip into the ocean waters. A large cylinder shape extends from the two rocks into a curve… yeah, alright, I think you get it. That's a penis.jpg. The view is very hard to miss, and it's any wonder how gaming developers miss this formation in both versions of the game. Link and Peter Pan One of the most iconic heroes in the world of Nintendo is Link. It's too bad that all of Link's inspiration actually came from Peter Pan. The similarities are eerie. There's the green outfits, pointed ears, and the seemingly inability to ever age. When Link was first created for the NES, his design was limited to the basic graphics on the console. As the character became popular, illustrated versions were clearly a ripoff of Peter Pan. Not only are both of their looks the same, but each hero has a weapon of choice. The sword. Sure, Link's sword may be longer and more powerful. <laughs> But no one is really comparing the two. The Zelda franchise also decided to introduce the character of Navi, a fairy that was clearly based off of Tinkerbell. Navi sticks by Link's side, helps him in tough situations, and uses a little magic to get through their adventures together. Oh, and don't forget about Peter Pan's Shadow and Dark Link. Next thing you know, Link will do battle with a Girahim that has a hook for a hand. There you have it. What fact do you think is the creepiest? Is there anything that we missed? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to The Gamer on YouTube. Nintendo is known for being a family-friendly company, but what happens when retro games spaz out become creepy as hell? We're talking Pokemon, Animal Crossing, Mario, usually pretty innocent stuff. Video games used to be a lot more sketchy, and sometimes when old school games glitched, these moments would freak the crap out of you. Hey friends, this is Wes from The Gamer, and something that freaks me out is that Toad isn't wearing a hat. That's just the shape of the top of his head. Today, we're going to check out some old school Nintendo gl 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 glitches that'll probably freak you out, and keep an eye out for any glitches or mistakes in this video. But before all that, make sure to click the subscribe button and ring the bell so you can be the first to see all the latest videos from The Gamer. Let's go! 
Way before Pokemon had people walking into the streets and getting smashed by traffic, there was the Game Boy. Ah, simpler times. And for this handheld system was the notoriously glitchy Pokemon Red and Blue. And maybe the most notorious glitch of the entire thing was missing no. This is like getting on camera Bigfoot riding a UFO. Essentially, it's a jacked up looking Pokemon that appears after doing a series of complicated events that we're not going to go into now because they're boring. But look how weird that thing is. It's like the barcode from hell. It can also appear as bones, a ghost, or a question mark. This isn't the only glitch Pokemon, or glitch in general in the game. There's tons of them, but it's definitely the creepiest. So tell that Pokemon to get out of here. Since you're watching this video, I assume you love to see ugly faces. So this next glitch should be right up your alley. Animal Crossing is a Nintendo 64 game from 2001 that likes to keep things simple. You live in a village and you're essentially enslaved by this raccoon named Tom Nook who forces you to do his bidding and work against your will to pay off an enormous debt. I personally like to punch Tom right in his nose. Anyways, there's a glitch in the game that'll turn your character's face into what they're probably feeling inside. A lifeless, soulless husk of a human. The empty eye sockets. The gaping mouth. That's the look of a dead man if I've ever seen one. You get this glitch by dropping all your items, hopping on a train, and then resetting the game without saving properly. Some people might argue that this isn't a glitch at all. It's just Nintendo's way of reminding you to save your game with the gyroid. Since your decaying face looks suspiciously like the gyroids in the game. To those people I say, shut up, have fun with the game. But also, you make a pretty good point. Ghosts. Mr. Head Hat. Ghouls. This dude. These are just a few of the characters from the 2001 glitch fest called Luigi's Mansion. A lot of you might have heard of this glitch before, but assumed it was intentional. I know I've seen about 40 articles saying this is the most morbid thing Nintendo's ever done. But to put it simply, no. Several times in the game, lightning strikes, and it appears as if you can see Luigi's shadow hanging from the rafters. It only happens because of a lighting error, when abnormal camera angles are being used in the game. But nevertheless, this is the creepy glitch to end them all. Nintendo games in America have their fair share of weird moments. Whether it's 10 year olds forcing animals to fight in Pokemon, or an Italian plumber jumping on turtles in Mario. As weird as games can get here in America, nothing compares to the games only released in Japan. You'll never guess which Nintendo Wii game featured tons of familiar characters but was too weird for American kids. If you haven't clicked the like button, be sure to do so and make sure you subscribe to never miss a video. Without further ado, here are 10 Nintendo games too disturbing for American release. Clock Tower There are three types of games on this list. Scary games, adult games, and just plain weird games. Clock Tower is definitely the first one, as it's still scary to us today. Clock Tower is a survival horror game released in 1995 for the Super Famicom in Japan. The game follows orphan Jennifer Simpson after she is adopted by the Barrows family along with other orphan girls. At the start of the game, things immediately go south for Jennifer and the other girls as they are attacked by Scissor Man, the game's villain. The maniac wielding a giant pair of scissors kills one of the children, but you and the others escape. The game consists of Jennifer exploring the Barrows family mansion for a way to escape, while also evading Scissor Man. Because of the game's terrifying themes, it was never released in America. Luckily, a group of dedicated fans have released an English translation for the game. The game is based on the 1985 film Phenomena from Italian horror director Dario Argento. This film is considered a classic, and if you can't find a way to play the game, the movie is highly recommended. Despite the game never releasing outside of Japan, it has gone on to inspire many horror games, some of which have been released in America. Cho Aniki Bakaretsu Rantuden We're now feeling thoroughly creeped out from Clock Tower, so let's get into something weird as a palate cleanser. The surreal fighting game Cho Aniki Bakaretsu Rantuden, which translates to Super Big Brother Exploding Brawl, is a quite a bit stranger than Street Fighter. This game is actually a spin-off based on the equally weird side-scrolling shoot-em-up by the same name. These games feature very muscular men wearing just a tiny bathing suit. The characters are all very strange, of course, ranging from a strong man painted silver floating around on a moon, or a little blue gingerbread-looking guy with zero expressions on his face. There are eight different characters with their own unique moves, abilities, and style. 
The music, of course, matches the oddities of the characters with the repeating voice samples and annoying instrumentals. Each of the game's stages features flexing men in places like a field of flowers or even a church. Once you get past the weirdness, it actually seems to be a pretty solid fighting game and has often been compared to popular fighting games like Dragon Ball Z. The game seems to have no chance in getting a release in the US, but since it's a fighting game, you don't need to know how to read Japanese to enjoy it. Doki Doki Majo Shinpan We've explored both the scary and weird sides of Japanese games. Now let's cautiously step into the world of games with mature themes. The country of Japan is well known for creating media that might spend too much time focusing on things like young girls and school uniforms. At times, this media comes out in the form of games we'd never expect to be played by an American audience. With the release of the Nintendo DS and its use of a touchscreen, Japanese gamers were finally given the option to physically touch characters within the game. Of course, it didn't take long for a game like Doki Doki Majo Shinpan to be made, urging gamers to touch girls wherever they want. The title translated is Thump Thump Witch Judgment, and the goal of the game is to discover witches who are hiding in a high school. Of course, the only way to discover the witch is to touch a certain part of their skin to reveal a witch mark. And not surprisingly, the game expects you to tap all over this young girl's legs. You'd think the girls in the game would be offended at the player, but the developers made it so that they didn't get mad as long as you tap their secret spot. Yeah. Dual Love Now, we're all about equality here at The Gamer, and if you assumed inappropriate Japanese games only featured young girls, then do we have a surprise for you. Dual Love was released on the Nintendo DS in Japan, and much like our previous entry, the developers used the touchscreen in a strange way. In the game, you play a girl in high school who discovers an underground fight club at a private school. There are five different boys who fight in this club, and you have the chance to date them. In order to date any of these guys, however, you must first perform favors for them. These favors can include using the DS touchscreen to wipe sweat off their chest in the sauna, or giving them a massage to heal their bruises after a fight. The most interesting thing the game lets you do is actually use the microphone built into the DS. This part of the DS isn't often used, but in Dual Love you can shout into it to cheer on your man during a fight. The game is rated C in Japan, meaning only kids 15 or older can buy it. It's not really surprising most of these Japanese visual novels never really see release in the West. Sweet Home One of the most popular horror games out there today is Resident Evil. Most people know the franchise is partially inspired by the Alone in the Dark series, but those games aren't very scary today. The game credited with creating the overall aesthetic of Resident Evil is called Sweet Home, and it was released for the Famicom console. The game's director was Tokuro Fujiwara, who went on to produce Resident Evil. He worked with Capcom to adapt the Japanese horror film by the same name into a game. He also had help from the film's director, Kiyoshi Kurosawa, who acted as a supervisor and was very involved in the whole process. The game features several members of a film crew who explore an intricate mansion filled with evil spirits. Each of your party members have unique abilities but can be killed at any time. As you go through the mansion, you will be attacked at random by enemies like zombies, ghosts, or creepy dolls. The game follows the exact same plot as the film it's based on, and people who are fans of the film also love the game. However, since the movie was never released outside of Japan, the game wasn't either. Barbarossa Video games in the World Wars go together like Mario and Luigi. With the upcoming releases of Call of Duty World War II and Wolfenstein II The New Colossus, this trend shows no sign of slowing down. But what about a World War II game made in Japan that couldn't be released in America? Barbarossa was released in 1992 for the Super Famicom and is named after the German operation by the same name. It was a military campaign by Nazi Germany to invade the Soviet Union over the course of 13 missions. The video game version of this game allows you to partake in all the same missions, and has you playing as the Nazi forces. Luckily, they didn't attempt to change history as the only way for the game to be concluded is by losing. The cover of the game prominently features Adolf Hitler, which would have been a pretty shocking thing to see on a shelf next to something like Zelda. The game is filled with real historic images of soldiers, leaders, and tanks. According to fans of strategy games, Barbarossa is actually a pretty decent game considering it's only 8-bit. Since you play as Nazis in this game, we aren't surprised it was never released in America. Gokuju Paradis In an earlier entry, we mentioned a game's weird inspiration came from an equally weird side-scrolling shooting game. In Japan, there was no shortage of weird shoot-em-up games, more commonly known as shmups. Most of these games were made by Konami, including the well-known game Gradius. But when things get really weird at the studio, you end up with games like Gokuju Paradis, which was released on the Super Famicom. The game only had seven stages to play through, but saying each one of them is unique is an understatement. 
Flying through a crane game with an arm picking up and dropping toys on you, an underwater stage where you battle a cat submarine, and a disco are just a few places that you can go. The music features remixes of classical music from all around the world and could put anyone in the mood to dance. While a Nintendo version of the game was never released, Konami did put out an English version of the game in arcades, but changed the name to The Fantastic Journey. This was also the first game in the Parodia series which included the option to play with two people, so you can even weird out your friends. Fatal Frame 4 Some Japanese franchises are released in America for a while, but can be denied if the games get too violent, or in this case, too scary. Fatal Frame started off as a series mostly seen on Sony consoles, with the first one being released on the PlayStation 2. In 2008, Tecmo Koi wanted to release the fourth game in the franchise on the Nintendo Wii to take advantage of the console's motion controls. Fatal Frame, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, had players using a camera that could be pointed anywhere on the screen. When taking a photo, terrifying ghosts would be revealed to the player and would help solve the overall mystery. Because of Nintendo's more family-friendly direction with the Wii console, it's no surprise this game never made it to America. Information about a European version of the game was leaked and Nintendo confirmed it was in the works. Unfortunately, this version of the game was never finished and the only version of the game is in Japanese. A portable version of Fatal Frame was released for the 3DS in America called Spirit Camera. The fifth Fatal Frame game, Maiden of Black Water, was released in 2014 for the Wii U and cemented the franchise's return to the United States. Gift Pia our next game on the list is from the predecessor of the Wii, the incomparable Nintendo GameCube. The developer behind the game is known as Skip, and prior to this game, they made the very strange Chibi Robo, which was released in the US. Their next game, Gift Pia, isn't just capitalized oddly. The rest of the game is pretty weird too. You play as Pockle on Nanashi Island. Nanashi translates to nameless. The day is actually the day of the coming-of-age ritual common on the island where boys become men. Unfortunately, on the day of Pockle's ritual, he oversleeps and completely misses the event. All of the townspeople who gathered for the event get very angry at his carelessness, including the town mayor. The mayor breaks into Pockle's home to wake him up, accuses him of committing treason, and sends him to jail. Not quite the family-friendly start we'd expect from such a bright and colorful game. After being released from jail, your character's face is pixelated and you find out you must pay 5 million mains, the game's currency, to have your ritual. The game was never released in America as Nintendo deemed its content as too weird. Since the game has so much text, it would have been an expensive game to translate and release overseas. Captain Rainbow If you thought Gift Pia sounded interesting, the developers behind it have made quite a few games that have never made it to America. One of these games was released on the Nintendo Wii in 2008 and is known as Captain Rainbow. Captain Rainbow is an adventure game similar to previous Skip-produced games where you are tasked with simply interacting with odd characters. The characters featured in this game are especially interesting because most of them have been included in previous Nintendo games. This all-star roster isn't quite as impressive as something like Super Smash Bros, as most of these characters are easily forgettable. One of these characters is Birdo, who some should recognize from Super Mario Bros. 2, and some Mario sports games. One of the quests you do for this character is a pretty clear indicator as to why the game is not released outside Japan. Birdo is arrested for using the girl's bathroom and requests Captain Rainbow to prove to the court that she is a girl. To do this, you break into her home and find something vibrating under her pillow. The game never shows us what this is, but we have a few guesses. This is one of the many inappropriate moments in the game that kept it out of the States. Well, that's all for 10 Nintendo games that were too disturbing for an American release. Which one of these games would you want to play the most? Were there any that we missed? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to The Gamer to never miss a video. Cute, cuddly, lovable Toad. Don't look now, but the Super Mario Brothers series' most innocent character actually has some pretty intense backstories. Some of these theories are so nuts that it might have you relook at how you play Mario games altogether. Hey, this is Wes from The Gamer, and today I'm going to be showing you some insane theories about our friend Toad. Make sure to click the subscribe button and the little bell to be part of the notification squad so you'll never miss out on a new video from The Gamer. And make sure to stick around until the end of the video to see the hilarious and interesting comments from our last video. Now here are the insane Toad fan theories that change everything. Let's start off with Princess Peach treating Toad like royal crap. If you ever played as Peach in Super Smash Bros., you'll know that she uses Toad as a shield. Strike one. She has a magic umbrella that she can use pretty much any time, but she chose to hurt her friend. Strike two. And every Toad in the game is referred to as just, well, Toad. None of them have a specific name outside of a different color clothing or head. Strike three, princess. 
Not only does Peach not care about Toad's well-being, but she runs a pretty horrible royal regime. Maybe the princess is more bloodthirsty than we once thought. These insane theories are only going to get weirder from here, people. And you know, why don't you let me know down in the comments what weird theory you have about Toad. The next theory we have about Toad makes him seem a lot more smart than we previously thought, and more sad as well. As we all know, your princess is in another castle was one of the most annoying phrases to hear. You go through all this work to save the princess, but only Toad is there. Well, what we've theorized is not only does Toad knowingly trick Mario in going to the wrong castle, but they do it to save their own butts. Think about it. Toad knows that the princess doesn't care about her mere servants and has to confuse Mario into saving Toads that have already been captured. It's a terrible series of events, but at least the Toads get treated with some kind of dignity. Now our final theory makes Mario seem a little less than awesome. In the Super Mario Instruction Manual, it says that Toads were transformed into bricks. And some bricks even deliver a mushroom for Mario to eat. So by deductive reasoning, I can only conclude that Mario eats decapitated Toad heads. And before you say Toads also eat the Super Mushrooms too, I've got some bad news for you. Toads are cannibals. I hope I didn't ruin your day, or at the very least ruin mushrooms for you. They're a great source of vitamin D. Need mushroom brains. Alright, now here are a few shout outs from the video, things about Luigi that make no sense. Bowser Bro says, The part of my life that makes no sense is that giant floating purple donkey looking at me from the other side of the road and speaking English. Wait, it's just a tree. Bowser Bros, I love your style, man. You sound a lot like me. Someone who barely has grasp on reality. Cool dude slash PB2 slash Vlog Gaming Channel says, The thing that makes no sense in my life is that I'm the most handsome guy in the world, yet no girls chase me and rip my shirt off. I can literally say that I have never had that issue. Sanmitro Deshpande says, I have two soaps, white and green. When I bathe with the white one, my day goes bad, and when I do with the green, it goes okay. And when I do both, that's weird, my day goes great, which makes no sense. That's pretty cool, Sam Mitra. Sometimes I decide to use no soap at all, and for some reason people avoid me on those days. Weird, huh? Make sure to check back next video to see if your funny or interesting comment gets featured. Okay, that's the end of this vid. Remember to let me know what weird theory you have about Toad. Leave your funny or interesting responses down in the comment section. And make sure you remember to click to subscribe to The Gamer so you don't miss out on any of the cool stuff we've been working on. And if you want to watch another video right now, you're gonna like that one. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. This has been Wes for The Gamer, and thank you for watching. Peace out, gamers!